Hello and welcome to an Everyday Canines video. In this episode, we're gonna play the fun trick, jump over my leg. So I like tricks that I can do with minimal equipment because that way I can teach them and do them when I'm out and about and I just need to do something to distract my dogs. Maybe I'm waiting um, in class for my turn. So I, um, I want games that I can do easily with my dogs to keep them busy and focused on me. So this is a game that I haven't taught Swift. I have taught, um, Merlin, my other Sheltie, um, and this is jump over my leg, which again, as I say, it's so simple, all it needs is me and treats. So the focus of this game is to get them to jump over your leg, go around you, and then just do it repeatedly. Um, you can see similar ones that you can do, like they have people have their arms, <laughs> she's doing it. Um, the reason I did it with, over my leg uh, with Merlin is because he can't jump so high these days, he's got a few health niggles. So this was a nice, easy way for him to do it. Uh, and it's just a fun game. As I say, you can just do that. You're sitting around somewhere, you just put your leg out. We can play this game. So I'm gonna show you with Swift what we do. And I've got two versions of this game. So this is version number one. So in this version, I want Swift to go just over my leg and around me. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna set her up. And obviously I've got a treat in my hand. So this is sort of luring, but I'm gonna just, yay, good girl. So that's the start. Now I don't want her going back and forth, so I'm not gonna reward her going back. I'm only gonna reward her going one way. Nice, good girl. And what I'm gonna do, this is her first session, so this is exactly how I would teach because this is her first session. What I'm gonna do, as she goes round, I'm dropping the treat. Let me just get her set up. I'm dropping the treat here so that she's automatically going round me there she goes, and each time I drop it a little bit further. And what I ideally want her to do is I want her to come around behind me, get it, and come around this side again, good girl spare. So what I'm doing is I'm gradually getting it further and further behind me so that the quickest route for her to get back to position is to go around me. So this time I'm gonna put it right behind me, that's it. So get it, get it. I find when they start going behind you, that's the hardest part. They suddenly go, oh, I'm going out of sight of you. Nice, good girl, get it. So what I'm gonna actually start doing is this time, though I'm gonna use this hand to lure, I'm gonna put the treat out with that hand. Get it. She's still determined to double back on herself. But because the, the hand was this treat, it means I can put it around further, so okay. Okay, that's it. Nice, get it. Yes, good girl. Now, because she came all the way around me, I'm rewarding that because that's what I want. I haven't been rewarding her going back because I didn't want that. Okay, obviously if you did, you could reward that. Is it? Oh, she said, do I go back? Or do I go around the foot? Oh, so we're having a little bit of a, oh, I'm not sure what you want, mum. So I'm gonna try experimenting, okay? That's it. Oh, she says, oh, okay, we'll go back a bit. So because she's had a bit of a moment and she's not really sure, I'm gonna just take it back a second. Good girl. Okay. And what you can do is you can have a treat in both hands so that they go around on one hand. Good girl. And then they see this hand, swift, and they get the second treat there. Good girl. Or you can even pass the treat from hand to hand. Get it? Really? You're still going to turn around and go back? Really? Really? Okay. Hang on. Good girl. Get it? What's this? Good girl. So I keep building this treat up, uh, sorry, this trick up and go round and round. And then you can do it so they're doing it three or four times. Um, as they get better, good girl, how about? And they get more confident, you could obviously start lifting it. This, this does require a little bit of acrobatics. And I'll be honest with you, I don't have a lot of acrobatics. But if you got good, you could start offering, lifting your leg up. Good girl. You could maybe get on a chair. If you've got a bigger dog, you might want to sit on a stool and lift your legs straight out. I'm quite happy to have it just at this level and for her to just be going around and around. 
Okay, so this is version two of jump over my leg. It's not technically jump over my leg, it's more um, step over my leg. But this version of the game is about proprioception and it's getting your dog to think about their body in a different way because they're gonna be using their legs a different way. So I'm gonna see, because she's obviously just been going around, I'm gonna see if she can do it. Okay, side, good girl, side. So you see, <clears throat> what I'm asking her to do, side, is to step over with her one side legs first. So she's sidestepping over my leg. So it's getting her to think about, yeah, girl, you could get it, yeah. It's getting her to think about um, her legs and her muscles in a different way. This is a game you can use to warm up um, before doing agility. Because what you're getting your dog to do, they're using their legs in a slightly different way. Um, they're using these muscles and the legs muscles and they're getting their legs to move in side to side, getting those muscles warmed up. The way to teach this is not to start by going over your leg because obviously it's quite hard. Now she's a small dog. Swift, come here please. Sit. She's a small dog. Obviously if you've got a bigger dog this is not so much of an issue. But for her to step over my leg is actually quite hard. So to start with we start with something a lot smaller. As to start with I used a uh, jump bar, jump pole, because it's 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 narrow, so there's not a lot they've got to step over, I know, and it's easy for them to do. So, initially, you're going to just have your dog lined up beside it, so their feet are right beside it, and then with a treat, you're just going to see if they'll put, one paw is good enough to start with, and then just wait for them to put, see if they'll put another paw. Good girl. So at this stage, I mean, she's obviously, she knows what she's doing. This stage is just getting them, their feet are there. So they're just, you know, oh, I feel something on my feet. I'll just shuffle over it. That's all they're doing. If you had a lot of trouble with your dog going sideways, so you see she's curving slightly. I want them to go quite evenly. That was nicer. If you had a lot of trouble with your dog doing that, what I did is I put this very close to um, a unit or a bed or wall, anything, so that there was only limited space for them to turn in. That way, they couldn't kick their back ends out. They had to step more sidewards. So you could even use an arm, but that's harder because you've got to try and bend over. But I prefer it like that. So we play this game, and you can see she's good at it. It's very easy at this way. And I, once they get good, I keep my hands low. So they have to go to the treat there. That's the other thing. You don't want to do this. Because look what happens when I do this. They turn. So what they want them to do is I want to keep my hand very low. Let's get you over the bar. Very low like this and just gently move it so that they're more inclined to go sideways. Because if I start lifting it up and I start turning it that way, you're going to get them to go over. Once you've got them doing this on a low, you obviously put it up to your height. Now I don't put it above wrist height because I think that starts getting a little bit unfair. So I don't put it above wrist height because really I just need them to stand over it and that's good enough. Once we get good at this, and you can see how good she's gotten at this, I tend to do, if I'm wanting to do is I do this as a little body conditioning exercise once a week and I do 30 reps in sets of 10. So I do 10, then we break, and then we do another 10. And I monitor and watch and I see if there's difference between the left and the right. So if I put her over here, you'll see this better with Sparrow. So Swift, can you sit please? Swift, can you sit please? You wait. So I am monitoring to see if there's any weakness from one side to the other. Sparrow. So if we do this with Sparrow, Swift, can you come here please? And sit, wait. So you can see Sparrow goes to her left nicely. And that was pretty good, but you notice that when she goes from her right, she is more inclined to skip with her back legs. She's trying to jump really fast. She's less, um, she's less methodical with it. So let's just get you straightened up again, Spare. Always make sure they start straight. Okay. Nice. So that was a nice two-step. Now watch. See, she hops. Now I know that she's got a weakness on this left. Sorry, this this left leg, this left knee. Sit that leg is weaker than the right. So that does not surprise me. 
but it's something that I can monitor and keep an eye on. And I have to say, uh, she's doing this far better than she used to. When she first started, she couldn't get that put. Even when this was, this was low, she struggled to take her foot over the bar when she was going from her right to left. So, you know, she has done improved immensely. She'll still sometimes catch that foot, but she's done immense. I mean, that was a lovely step. She's done so much better, sit, sit, because she has learned through doing this game and lifting it up, she has learned so much how to use her back end better. So this has helped her enormously. So that is two ways to do it. Now, once you've got them going really good over a pole, the next stage is to see if they'll do it over your leg. And your leg is obviously wider. So you may find they do put their foot on your leg, but the value of getting them to go over your leg means that they can do this game anywhere because I can't carry, I'm not necessarily going to carry that pole to a agility ring or my training class, but I've always got my leg, I should hope. <laughs> so we can do this anywhere, good girls. And we can use that as a nice warm up game to get you ready to play agility. So I hope that gives you some fun ideas how you can tr train these two tricks, which are pretty much very similar tricks, but obviously they're using the body in a different way. So definitely you can train both. Remember, if you're training both, make sure you have different cues for your dog so your dog understands which one you're asking for. But yeah, definitely have a load of fun with these. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you did, subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our Facebook and our Instagram. And I hope to see you all again very, very soon.